Hi guys, Andy here, and welcome to another visual novel from Rosewater Studios slash Bonnier. Uh, Sage, um, it's called Sagebrush. Uh, I believe it was entered for Yowie Jam 2016. Um, so I decided, oh, I'll give it a go. It shouldn't take me that long. It's, uh, still, it's a demo. Uh, but Bonnie has been posting some of the artwork, and it is so fucking gorgeous. I knew I had to play it. Um, but yeah, I found, I found it, uh, via their Tumblr. Uh, which, in attention from Itch.io. I will leave a link in the description below. Uh, but yeah, let's start this. I'm really fucking excited. This game seems so fu- I already said it before. But it's going to be so fucking beautiful, I already know it. Uh, okay, let's start. While finishing off a lackluster sandwich, I've decided to eat way too late. I considered my options. Um, I don't know, what's this? Let's say... Uh, I don't know. Is this music copyrighted? Oh, if it's not. I'm sorry if it's not copyrighted or if it is copyrighted. Uh, I don't know. How do I... Okay, never mind. I'll figure it out later. Uh, drop out once the semester is or one... Wait, hang on. While fin... Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. While finishing off a lackluster sandwich, I've decided to eat way too late. I consider my options. Drop out once the semester ends, or, well, drop out. <laughs> yeah, that's the only option. Uh, shit, I guess I really don't have any other options, do I? Oh, okay. Uh, um, can I pull up the description? Give me one second, I want to pull up the description real quick. Ah, uh, why well, look for the game? It should not take me that long. So how's everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope OBS is capturing this. Uh, uh no, uh, my browser just froze. Shit. Okay, let me Google it on my phone. Uh, okay, I'll Google it while I keep on reading because I don't want to take up too much time. I've never had the pleasure of making a decision where I didn't have a choice in the matter. There's only one option I can choose. The one I don't want. What a joke. Yeah, I'm bitter. The time I spent here has been nothing short of a wild ride, but it all felt well worth it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying, I just got a message right now. It's super annoying. Uh, now well... Now well. <laughs> and now... What do I do now? What will I do? I ask myself this. But I already know what I'll have to do. I'll have to go home and I can't come back to college anymore. It's as simple as that. That's so sad. That is, that makes me sad. Like, well, I'll figure out, we'll figure it out why. And just throughout the game. The campus here doesn't seem too impressive. But once you discover the eastern end of the building, the view is pretty nice. Okay, let me see if I can figure out some of the settings real quick. I need to change something real quick. Uh, preferences. Uh, turn down the music a little. Uh, I think the text speed should be there. Maybe? I don't know. Uh... Okay, pretty building. Pretty area. There's not a single other building in sight, and aside from a standard football field, there's mountains slightly dusted with sagebrush. The fields are golden and wide. The site's really spectacular. I guess I watch a tractor, as tiny as an ant, bulldoze his way through the distant fields. The humming it makes is all me calming. It's the only thing preventing my anxiety to blow to epic, epic, epic proportions. I can't read. I wonder how much he makes. To be honest, manual labor like that is probably sufficient enough for me. I 
I could imagine as a landsca land landscaping man for a brief moment, hightailing it to the mountains and coming home to a nearly empty cabin. The daydream becomes so oddly specific that I've conjured up myself in a tacky Pendleton coat while warming my hands up to one of those portable camping heaters in my dark drab cabin. Wait, a camping heater indoors? <laughs> I mentally combust my dream cabin into flames. It's just common sense that you can't use those things indoors. <laughs> ah, that's great. I fucking, it's, it's kind of self-aware. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> I frown tightly and decide that manual labor isn't as great as they all chalk it up to me. I'm pretty much back to square one, so I lay so I lay limping uh, I lay limping back on the beach inside. My scholarship only lasted a year. My financial aid will end when the next year rolls around. I can't depend on uncle for money. I still don't have a job and I have no idea what I'm going to pay off the rest of the money that I owe. And I completely fucked that entire sentence up. My life's completely going down the drain. And yet, the only thing I can think of... The only thing I can think about is... Wipe out and infringement to brutal law, biochemistry, lab project, and Pendleton coats. Uh, Pendleton coats. The daydream really had me thinking. Do I even have that Pendleton coat anymore? The one with the genuine wool lining? Did I misplace it back at home? I doubt my uncle threw it out. He's barely tossed out old underwear in decades. He doesn't give things away either. He's stingy. Even though he doesn't want to admit it. When was the last time I saw it? I'm unable to con conjure any leads as to where that coat went, but I'm absolutely sure it existed. But my lack of memory starts to toy with my mind. Did it really exist? I mean, it had to, right? I wore it for my 7th grade photo. Right? Damn it, this is really bothering me. As if the world couldn't care less about my trailing thoughts, I'm interrupted by rap footsteps rapidly approaching me. While holding on to my empty sandwich wrapper for my dear life, I must look strange to whoever is approaching me. But with one look, I'm instantly feeling relieved. It's just Junior, my best friend. He's nice to look at. He staggers over slowly and gets onto the bench carefully, like an old man. That, oh yeah, that's uh, me, definitely. Finish with football practice? I'm not bad either. Yeah. I could tell. You're getting on the bench like you've had a hernia. Like you've got a hernia. Oh, Jesus Christ. He doesn't reply. He just continues to adjust his position, sliding down on the bench. I crumble my sandwich wrapper into a ball, but stop before attempting to toss it into the garbage can. There's something off about Junior. I'm not confident in my basketball skills. Never was, never will be. So I get up from the bench and toss my garbage away. As soon as I return, Junior turns to me with a quick glance, but averts his eyes when he speaks up. I didn't go to practice today. He says it like it's forbidden, which puzzles me. He skipped out on pra <laughs> he skipped out on practice a few times before, and would always laugh of and would always laugh off having to do the odd punishments. He never exactly elaborated on what those were now that I think about it. But they couldn't have been bad enough to joke about having to do them. Hmm, really? Why? Junior lets out a dragged out audible sigh as he rubs his temples. Something's clearly wrong. It's Arlene. Is she okay? Oh yeah, she's fine. Junior immediately scoffs, which leaves me feeling amidst a confusion yet yeah, leaving me feeling amidst a confused yet relieved. When you put up when you put some bad news together with the person you know, you can't help but jump to conclusions. I have my differences with her, but she's still my friend too, I guess. Is she? She doesn't sound like your friend. Arlene is Junior's girlfriend. They've been dating since her sophomore year of high school. Back at home there is something of a scandalous pairing. Arlene was the prim and proper daughter of a police officer, and Junior was, well, Junior. I hope I'm pronouncing that name wrong. Uh, and nobody living in a tra and nobody living in a trailer. And I can't fucking read at all. 
But here at college, they blend in with the crowd. They're just a typical run-of-the-mill couple. Their relationship would prosper. Their relationship should prosper over here with no rumors or gossip. She broke up with me. Click. Junius slinks back into the bench. Okay, we're gonna turn off the music. I'm sorry, but that has to be turned off because it's. Uh, I think it's actually slowing down my recording. Uh, tech speed all the way. Not. Uh, we're not full screening. Uh, okay, everything's good. Junius slinks slinks back into the bench, crossing his arms and looking so lifeless. Only right now do I realize how much of a mess he looks. His clothes are wrinkled, his hair isn't brush, plus there's stubble starting to grow on his face. That's okay with me. Right before my birthday too. I guess you never think about it, you know? When you got when you have to cut someone off and like there's two most important days you gotta avoid. Their birthday and Christmas. Oh yeah, th yeah, that's horrible. Christmas and birthdays when you gotta do something unpleasant. Yeah, that's awful. Jenny erases two fingers to illustrate those two most important days, but then he pauses to erase another finger. Oh, and Valentine's Day too. Oh yeah, that's a kind of a third important one, I guess. I didn't really, I didn't really celebrate it that much after high school, which has passed. <laughs> Uh, what are the odds, right? I want to agree with him, but to be completely honest, the entire thing didn't make any sense at all. I just tried to look at him instead. As if Junior couldn't sink any farther into that bench, he did somehow. I'm stuck with my jaw open, thoughts racing and not exactly knowing what to say. And don't ask me what, why she did. I don't really want to talk about it, so yeah. It's over, really over. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, and I also really don't want to apologize if I'm speaking first before my recording is. It's just, it might be off for a few seconds because it's, um, uh, I keep getting high encoding and the FPS is okay. My frames is okay. But, uh, I don't, it hasn't dropped any frames that I can see as of yet because I have, uh, I have my window minimized and, well, they're both, uh, minimized, sort of. Uh, but Sagebrush takes over a huge chunk of it. So I'm just assuming it's running properly. Uh, but yeah. I really, really try to sound like I am. I'm not a good guy. I'm an asshole. But I'm also not so completely transparent that I could come for somebody on their breakup when I was secretly wishing for its downfall before it even began. Jesus Christ. But that's totally something I've done. <laughs> I've done that before. At least that's what I thought. But yet, yeah, I feel really disheartened for the both of them. They were together for so long, they were so natural together. And now that they're not, I don't know, it just feels wrong. And I really wanted to end that all this time. Thankfully, Junior immediately gets up the stretch. Actually, let me get up really quick because I need something to drink. Thankfully, oh fuck, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like almost out. And this is not gonna be good for my voice because I'm drink drinking soda and I'd rather have something light and not thick, but it's alright. And, but my headphones are not alright. Uh,. You don't have to apologize. You didn't do anything. Uh, yeah, he did. He was wishing for you to break up this whole entire time. I beg to differ. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you, you know, in case you were looking for me and I got worried or something. Huh? Well, because I'm probably going to lock myself in the room for a few days. You know, you feel like watch some Mori or Judge Judy and stuff. Oh, Jesus, I would fucking hate to watch any... I mean, I've watched it, but I would fucking hate to watch it. Just... That just does not seem fun or anything I'd like to do, even if I were in a shitty mood. Oh, okay. You can really tell there's something wrong if Junior decides to watch TV. 
Our university only provides local channels, but those who can't live without watching anything remotely interesting will buy it directly. Junie and I made the mistake of hauling the TV over here and didn't realize we actually had to pay for cable. To our surprise, we found out a lot of people don't care too much about cable as much as they do about the internet. Basically, if you have the internet, you are fucking good to go. You don't have to watch cable anymore. Only those that's generally bored, sad, or desperate will want to watch anything here on campus. And Junior is definitely showing symptoms of that. Seeing him like this is worrying. He gives me a quick glance, a short wave, and turns around before he plans to walk away. I jump up from the bench and run up to him, but I but am at a loss of what to say that can get his attention. He just gives me a stare. Let's go to the bar. Oh my god, I've never been to a bar. I'm 20 something years old. I've never been to a bar. Huh? Oh Jesus, tell me OBS did not freeze. Okay, thank god. It, just, it froze like it did not want to move at all. Uh, I hope I can get this recording done. Oh shit, it fucking changed. It's happy hour. Come on, it'll be fun. His facial expression wilts noticeably, and I immediately regret even saying fun. I don't mean it like that. Mean it like what? Getting me wasted to temporarily forget the pain? Is that what you mean? I noticed that Junior's just sporting a smirk. At least he's trying to lighten up, I suppose. Yeah, I keep getting high in coding warning. Uh, which reminds me. I love my HP stream. I got it uh, earlier this year. But it's not, it is not It is not a good computer for recording. It is definitely terrible. And I wish I could... Actually, I wish I had the time and the money to go look for a decent one. Which I might do soon. I haven't decided yet. Because I, I just got to see how this... Um, uh, the coming months play out so I can afford a new laptop. But I'm still going to use this one because I have my editing software on here. Um, but yeah, this is not recommend. I don't recommend this. I'm sorry. I'm drifting off from the game. I'm sorry. That is not my intention. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Junya. Listen, you just shouldn't be drinking for my sake. For your sake? I scoff and have a good chuckle. I'll have you know, I sure as hell need a drink just as much as you do. Let's do ourselves a favor and go. But if we're not going to, I'll just go alone, I guess. Junior stares at me blankly before his lips slowly curve into a smile. As if you make a habit of going to bars by yourself. Alright, if you're sure, then I'll go too. Alright, happy hour it is then. I smile back and it must be the first time I've done so in a good while. Junior ends up having a lot more fun than I thought he would, much to my surprise. We spend our time chatting amiably and joking around as usual. It's almost so normal that it feels all f that it all feels way too eerie. But then Junior downs a few drinks and then and it and it uh and then it hits me. Of course he's keeping everything in as usual. By the time we do a small round of shots, it all goes downhill from there. Oh Jesus Christ. Alcohol, the true serum. Isn't that a proverb or something? Proverb? Sorry, proverb, not proverb. Arlene used to do this thing, you know? She'd always come up with these ideas of how she could try to save me. What? I'm just trying to help you. Jeez, that has to be her most iconic statement. It drove me fucking crazy. And click. He scoffed slightly, then stared into the glass to help put his feelings into words. At first it felt really nice, you know? She was my first girlfriend. Of course, I was really happy that someone seemed to care about me. Besides, well, I don't know. It just felt like that. Like she was an angel heaven sent. That's what she wanted to be. And for a while, that's what I felt too. Everything she convinced me to do, I did it all in a heartbeat. 
She said she was trying to get me on the right track. But whenever we'd fight, she'd hold everything I did in the past against me. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's fucking shitty of people to do. His words slur together, so despondent and so poetic. I desperately wanted to stop him from continuing. Pat his back, saying, it's time to go home. And tell him he's going to regret saying all this stuff later. But I can't stop myself. I can't get the image out of my head. The ethereal Arlene, an angel sent down by God, being ripped and deconstructed into the flawed human being. We all knew she was. It was like I was a damn charity case to her. Did she pity me from the start? Probably. He slams his fist against the table, causing the glass to shake just slightly. Ah, uh, say something or keep quiet. Let's say something. I have to cut in. I just have to. He's obviously growing more irate the more he dwells on it. Listen, Junior. His head quickly shoots up to look me in the eyes. My mom walked out on me. So fucking what, right? Junior turns around and stands up, arms raised in the air. Big fucking whoop. My mom walk. In a panic, I end up stopping Junior before he can even finish the sentence. I cover his mouth twi twi twitely, tightly and attempt to get him seated back down. <laughs> I love the movement. That was so funny. He calms down and wraps his temple, not saying anything else. I can only bear to look at him with frustration before deciding on what to do. As I place a hand on his right shoulder, his head only raises slightly. I think it's time to go back. Let's get some sleep, yeah? I want to watch TV. Yeah, of course, we can watch TV. He's definitely not watching TV. Do you want something before we go? Like a soda or some water? Do you want some water? 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll go get you some water. Jesus Christ. I end up giving him not much choice in the matter anyway. I'll be back, alright? You'll stay, right? He fucking better stay right there. I'll stay. Junior's response is a bit delayed, and it gives off this impression that I've somehow hypnotized him into submission or something. I sprint off to chase down the bartender on the other side of the room. Can I just say, the transition, it's a lot better than Forget Me Not. Uh, I know Forget Me Not was done a few years ago, but the, the transitioning between the two between the scenes is a lot more smoother in this insane rush. I just want to say that real quick. Uh, sprint chasing down the bartender. Everyone's watching the game on the huge TV, so it's super crowded here. I tiptoe to peer over everyone's head, searching for the bartender. I click my tongue as I, find the as I find the bartender and realize he's watching the game like everyone else. So now onto my onto the next plan of action. Glancing out all angles and corners of the bar, tr I try to see if there's a soda machine anywhere. However, I end up getting distracted by some obnoxious voices behind me. Oh, beside me. Man, Lorenzo sure is a character. Tell me about it. Haha, <laughs> so are we gossiping about him as soon as he left then? Damn straight. It was your idea to invite him along. I didn't know that guy was a freaking robot. Sigh. That's some IT major for you. Apathetic and robotic. Ah, uh, true. <laughs> hey. Not all IT guys are weird. Jerry's nice. Jerry's awesome. Jeez, go right ahead and suck Jerry's dick if you like him so much. A slight chuckle accidentally slits my mouth. Out of all the things I could have laughed at today, <laughs> uh, what I thought was a quiet remark should have been drowned out by the crowd unfortunately it turned out to be my voice box malfunctioning on me. Suddenly, all the guys at the table look up and stare directly at me. I love that, like, uh, sweater. That's really cool. I don't even know these guys, let alone the person they're gossiping about. 
But I sure did eavesdrop on the whole thing. Yeah, you fucking did, because you're a fucking nosy ass bitch. Talk about embarrassing. Completely flustered and tempting look like I have somewhere to be. I shuffle away from the table. Only to accidentally step on somebody's feet and bump into them after backing up. When I turn around, there's an insanely tall guy behind me, giving me a tight-lipped, disgusted stare. Oh, fuck your hair. The message was very well received, because I sure as hell got my disgusting self out of there. At this point, I'm not sure what's more awkward. An entire table of guys staring me down or this dude telling me go dice gun with his eyes. Oh, come on OBS. Oh, thank god. Okay. Very handsome eyes. Well, handsome features too. Yeah, he was disgusting. No. No. Bad Ezra. Now's not the time to be thinking about things like this. Might I remind myself that I have a glass of water that urgently needs to be delivered? I briefly glance back to the area, just to satisfy my last minute curiosity. I notice that the guy is going to the very same table. He was a guy. They were already saying guy, they were all trash talking. Nice. Serves them right for gossiping about someone while they're in the same building. I mean, come on. That's like watching a melodrama film unfold before your eyes. My lips curve and says smirk when I see all the guys frantically checking their phones, desperately hoping he didn't hear a thing. I fucking hope he heard something, because that's bullshit. When I return to the section, Juni and I were seated. He's already slumped in his seat, arms on the table, and after a really squint just to make sure he isn't sleeping. He probably is. He's still just staring at the shot glass, rolling it around on its side. I noticed the bartender eyeing him. As if he were Jedi mind tricking him to leave the damn thing alone. Oh Jesus. Junior's focus shifts from the glass to my face once he notices my presence beside him. So you didn't run away, huh? Oh come on. Pick up on my recording, please. I don't wanna refocus this. Okay, thank god. Man, this has been a really inappropriate recording. I might actually have to dub myself over. Uh, I actually may dub myself over again. I don't mind. Ah, oh, okay. I told you, I was going to get water. But as you can see, it's pretty damn packed in here all of a sudden. I carefully hand Joni the cup. He smiles warmly before taking a huge gulp. Meanwhile, I lower myself to the empty seat beside him and watch him finish the water, but then quickly avert my eyes. God, I'm such a mother hen. When he's done, there's only a small amount left. He sighs in relief before drooping his body against mine, which startles me. His muscled arms snake around my shoulders, drunkenly attempting to balance himself. You're my best friend, Ezra. Always have, always will be. I can only look down in silence. What can I say? Where would I be without you, dude? Hmm, where would I be, right? Junior's other hand goes to aggressively shake my knee to get a response, and I sigh in return. Someone's getting a little friendly. Yeah, sure. I suddenly feel so nauseous, so anxious, and just so damn scared. I feel like everything's changing so fast, and I'm really unsure if I can handle it all. It feels like the entire world is pitted against me. It all makes me wonder if I can even come to terms with all the shit I'm knee deep in. I guess I should just blame it all on the alcohol. Getting Junior out of the bar and into his bed proves to be much more troubling than I anticipated. When I get back to the dorms, I try not to remember the details of how I manage it, but focus on trying to get myself ready for bed. Once I finish showering and change it into my pajamas, I take two aspirin out of the cupboard and place it on Junior's end table. It's probably not even close to being enough for him, but that's all we have. Just two aspirin? Damn! When the covers reach my knees, I suddenly stop myself from laying down further. I glance at Junior's dark outline snoring. I can't help but wonder, why did Arlene break it off with him? Could it be because... could it really be that? Then it would be all my fault, which I guess wouldn't be very surprising. Oh Jesus, what did you do, Ezra? 
I have a class in the morning tomorrow, so I try my best to go to sleep without any distractions. Uh, where were I? What are these options? Oh, excuse me. What are these options? Let's go here. Being in the lab first thing in the morning definitely helped stretch some brain muscles. The professor makes some announcements about the guidelines and the project in brief, then lets us loose to do our research. I glance to the seat beside me and, st and sigh. Still no lab partner today. While I'm writing my theories to start the experiment, I then wonder, wait, have I even met my lab partner? Probably not. Our seats were changed recently, so I admit I'm not the best at paying attention to other students in the class. But I'm pretty sure there was a guy who's been sitting next to me. It's going to be that uh, asshole from uh, the bar. It's safe to say that he's taking an extended leave of, of absence, probably. I start looking around the room at all the other students hired at work, checking their phones or horsing around with the lab equipment. I continue peering at all the angles of the room, as if that'd make my lab partner show up. A sigh skates me as I reach for my protective gear and I read over the notes I took yesterday. This isn't too hard of a project since we've been going over lab procedures and techniques. However, this project and our exam will be the deciding factor to see whether or not we're ready for a real laboratory. Oh my god, I get in a way, I guess I don't have to worry too much about this project. I don't know if I'll be taking any more classes after this semester. Or ever. Just as soon as I'm about to lose myself in concentration, I'm startled by a sound of fumbling and wrestling around b beside me. Hi, uh, so what's going on? I'm frozen for a brief moment while stuttering. This guy sits down beside me. Sits, uh, the guy sits down in the chair next to me and it immediately hits me that this guy is my lab partner. He's cute too. Oh. Uh, it's an experiment. You didn't hear that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're starting today, but he announced it yesterday. It's a group project. Really? He furrows his eyes from obvious exasperation. Where's the rest of the group? It's just you and me. Oh, okay. Well, that's good then. So he's smiling, huh? I didn't really peg him as a cheery kind of guy. Usually people would get would be given an expression where they're realizing they've been sailing on a sinking ship. Oh, Jesus. So what do we have? Ugh. I need to get comfortable. Because I'm in bed recording this. Uh, we're starting with two isolating... We're starting with isolating the protein that are in the tissue. And to do that... So protein purification. Yeah. The whole class is more or less doing the same thing. But what the root... What the professor is going to be looking at is our execution and how we get to our results. So we have to address six different properties in the projection to help isolate the proteins. Solubility, charge, hydrophobicity, phobicity? I know, I know what hydrophobic is. Uh, size, function, and stability. I glance at him, I glance at him to see if he's confused, but if, uh, oh my god, I can't fucking read. I glance at him to see if he's confused, but I can say we're certain by his expression. I always feel so embarrassed when I go on about this stuff. It probably, I probably sound like the professor's cold or something. Oh Jesus, I just realized they tweeted the wrong fucking title. <laughs> FGM, oh Jesus. I put FGM for forget me not because I'm still recording it. Uh, but I put it as a different acronym because I'm fucking stupid. Uh, oh, sorry for the rambling. And I I am sorry for my rambling. I uh, I tend to drift off a lot on random subjects that have no actual things to the video game we're playing. It's okay, I gotcha. Don't worry, you explained it really well. His complete focus on my explanation and relaxed way of understanding it all, especially after coming in late, really catches me off guard. When I have to explain things to other random classmates, I usually have to repeat myself a bunch of times. Maybe he's much more capable. To, uh, maybe he's much more capable than I thought. I'm totally okay with re-recording all of this fucking video game. Sorry, these are the project notes. 
I panic when the guy suddenly crosses the obvious personal boundaries to glance over my so so. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! I panic when the guy suddenly crosses obvious personal boundaries to glance over my sh shoulder. When he realizes this, he gives me an odd stare but bats off slightly. I try to ignore that it even happened and answer him directly. Oh. No, these are just my notes. I made them yesterday from previous lectures and stuff. Whoa, really? Seriously? This is a lot to write in one day. This is really amazing. He lifts the paper slightly off the desk. He looks so impressed with it that I wonder if he's just putting on a net. Maybe he's just really happy he gets to mooch off of someone who understands what the hell they're doing. However, he gives me such a warm, genuine smile when he looks at me. I felt my face go red. It's been a while that someone actually praised me on anything, let alone something as simple as schoolwork. That's so sad. It's chemistry. It's a matter of survival. Of course I'm going to try my damnedest to make an attempt at a good grade. I fucking wish I had. I could. I, I'm really fucking stupid when it comes to science and math. I just don't get it at all. It never stuck with me. Uh, but I wish I had people who were actually good with it, who could, who actually knew what the hell they're doing, because I sure as hell didn't. Oh, come on, you fucker, click. I clear my throat and attempt to change the subject and avoid looking flustered. It definitely doesn't go unnoticed, though. The guy ends up making something of a smirk to my reaction. Well, these are the project guidelines and the stapled worksheet. Okay, cool. Do you mind copying the guidelines for me since I didn't get them? Or I could just borrow them for a day if you don't have the time? Not really sure I trust them with the only copy I have, so I'll go to the library later just to be safe. No need, I'll just copy them for you tomorrow. Wow, you're a lifesaver. Completely heaven sent. He sure knows how to get on someone's good side, and to be honest, it's kind of working on me. At least my lap partner doesn't seem too bad. Thank you. Uh, Ezra, is that it? Did I read your handwriting right? I jolt up from my position and realized I had been staring at him for quite some time, yet didn't notice him gleaming my paper from my name. Oh, um, yeah, it's Ezra. Nice to meet you. You can call me Dion. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah, that was a quick vanishing. Uh, we spend the rest of the class preparing for the project and chat about which method we want to go about doing. Talking with Dion is refreshing. He's unexpectedly cheery but still has a cool edge to him. He also isn't completely oblivious to what we've been learning in class, which is commendable. And click. As for his alerts, well, he's also really good looking. Usually people wouldn't associate a short guy like Dion for being the zenith of masculinity, but he's got this air to him that's confident. I wonder if he's into guys. I mean, he's got to be at least like an inch in the spectrum somewhere. Wait a minute. I don't have the time to be daydreaming about a cute guy I talked to in my class. Uh, fucking same. I try to mentally scold myself from looking at Dion strangely and focus at the task at hand. We managed to get our first experiment done and wait for the rest of the class period to be over. Ugh, I'm beat. Junya isn't in the dorm when I arrive, so it looks like he was able to get out of bed this morning. At the very least, we're all out of bed. Where exactly to, I'm not sure. I decide to let some off, some I decide to let off some steam by playing wipeout or inf of infringement for the afternoon. I should probably eat lunch soon, but I guess I can wait. When I log on, I check to see if I have any bribes before going to the courthouse. But suddenly, my laptop screen goes blank. What? Did my battery run low? I check to make sure the cord is plugged in, and it is. Strange. I get up to try to reset the power strip, but there's no need. My alarm clock is still on and working fine. Pressing all the buttons doesn't work, and by the time I go for broke and try to restart the computer manually. No way. 
The computer won't turn on and there's no fan noise. Something is obviously wrong with it. Just my luck. What could get worse than this? Wait, never mind. I won't even go there. <laughs> he is so... He has shit luck, doesn't he? Ezra de definitely has shit luck. In a moment of frustration, I flop over on my bed. I stay there for quite some time, trying to figure out what to do, but only coming to one conclusion. It's broken, which isn't much of a solution. I bought that laptop three years ago. Since it's a really good make, I spent a ton of money on it, of course. For two summers, I worked off. I worked my ass off doing a bunch of odd jobs, most of which were construction favors for neighbors. I'm surprised I didn't lose any fingers or toes in the process. Ever since I bought it, I've been talking. I've been taking my utmost care for it. It feels like an egg in my nest now, and I've just got to crack on its side. I can't fix it. Suddenly, the gears on my head begin turning. But someone else can. I leap up from the bed and search for my laptop bag and wallet. Not too long ago, something went wrong with Junior's computer too, so he took it down to the lab building, where the library and computer labs are located. Apparently he said that some tech savvy guys hang out over there and can be willing to fix computers for, for, for a small fee. If Junior's gone through them before, it can't hurt to try and see if they'll fix my computer too. And let me take a drink real quick because my voice is getting tired. Okay. Uh, where's the lab? Is it not? Um, I really, I wish there was an option. Which one's the lab? Is this it? It's really funny that I thought for a second I was going back to class. Okay, is it this one? A woman is smiling at a group of customers, but soon grows restless, as if she knows. Her head turns to the window and looks right at me. She looks horrified. Uh, what? Is it this one? Here at the dorms, but wait. I'm going to the complete... <laughs> well, there's nothing fucking listed. Okay, here we go. It's been pretty tricky, but when I finally find the computer labs, I ask a group of guy kids about getting my laptop fits. I once they all point their fingers to a guy seated by himself in the complete opposite of the room. It's Lorenzo. When I approach the guy typing away on his computer desk, he doesn't glance up at me, but I recognize his face. I've met him before. Of course he did. He was that dick at the bar. Lorenzo. The guy I ran into the, at the bar last night. I clear my throat and attempt to get his attention. And I feel constantly intimidated when I travel on about my computer issue. I take my laptop out of the bag and he stands up, insanely tall in height compared to me. And it turns my laptop in his, to his direction. He's just so damn threatening, I feel like a lowly poor farmer speaking to a mighty king or something. He no. What makes me feel even more intimidated is that outfit he's wearing too. Jeez, all he's missing is a damn matching fedora. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is. He just needs that fucking fedora there. So, did you try turning it off and on? Oh my god. That'd be my solution, to be honest. Yes, I did. He makes this expression. Sort of like he's trying not to roll his eyes and instead looks everywhere but my face. And then down to the laptop. Are you sure? Yes, I'm completely sure. I did it several times. He freezes for a moment as if to think about something. Then presses some keyboard buttons and fumbling with the laptop's underside. I try not to stare at him too much, so I take a gander at the room and even eavesdrop into other people's conversations. My attention is brought back to Lorenzo, however, when I let him hear when I hear him let out a chuckle. I'm caught off guard by his slight smirk as he stares at me. You play wipeout of infringement? What? I dash to the laptop screen and lo and behold my laptop is completely fine, booted up and showing the desktop. Relief completely washes over me, but also some uneasiness. 
I'm particularly confused as to how the guy figured out I play that game, but then I realized that with the way I organized my shortcuts, the icon is obviously plastered to the side of the screen. I'm surprised, it's a pretty obscure MMORPG. And in case you don't know, uh, it's a fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, what was wrong with my computer, though? An electrical problem. Problem. I had to reset the battery. Or you didn't turn it on and off. <laughs> I ignored his snide comment and refused to let it get on my nerves. <laughs> oh, well. Thank you for fixing my battery. Thanks a lot. I sound a lot more generally thankful the second time I say it. Or at least I think I do. After reaching in my back uh, after reaching in my pocket for my wallet, I glanced back at him. How much do I owe you? A hundred bucks. Jesus Christ, just for doing that? <laughs> His expression remains unchanged as I continue to stare at him, gawking in disbelief. Did I hear that correctly? A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Are you fucking with me? Yeah, we're going to go with that one. I don't give a shit about the option. Other option. Uh, you're screwing around, right? You're just fucking with me, right? Right? Screwing with you? How much do you think my service is worth then? Uh, $25. You must be out of your mind if you think people are going to work for free. I, uh... My hands that remain un... Th my hand that remains clutched to my wallet feel frozen and cramped. He's really mad. I guess he's telling the truth. I really have to pay a hundred bucks. It feels like total bullshit, but at the same time, I'm still unaccustomed to the way things work out here. As opposed to back at home. Fumbling with my wallet, I flip through groceries, gift cards, and stats of one and five dollars bill, pretending as if I'm staring at a good one or two Ben Franklin's in there, which I'm not. I let a, <laughs> I let out a disgruntled sigh, hoping maybe some. Hey, oh, <laughs> I let out a disgruntled sigh, hoping maybe beaming myself out of this embarrassing situation is an option. Before I start to hear someone erupt in laughter. Lorenzo is the culprit. He's crossing his arms and lets out a good hearty laugh. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I, don't, I don't do voices, okay? <laughs> Two dots. Three dots. Should have seen your face. Priceless. Completely and utterly priceless. <laughs> My fee is usually $20 for something so simple. I guess I should feel relieved somehow, but I don't. I just feel like a piece of meat that's been discarded to some stray dogs. Translation, I pretty much don't find the situation very funny. I try to rem I try to remain composed as I pull out all the money left in my wallet, but hold on to it in case there's more jokes he wants to roll out on me. But it could be free if, oh Jesus. I admit my head snaps back to face him once I hear the word free. You add me as a friend on my thought of infringement. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I raise an eyebrow, really puzzled as to whether or not he's telling the truth. Just a friend request? Really? Is this guy so pathetically lonely on this virtual game that he has no friends? What's his angle? Yeah, why not? I don't have many friends on there. Or at least any I talk to. Oh. Suddenly, I feel so at ease, like the tornado is finally over, and things in my life are really looking up. Uh, Lorenzo just wants a friend request. I mean, he's pulled a really asshole move in the past 10 minutes or so, but no big deal. Oh, excuse me. A friend request is a slice of cake. Hell yeah, I'll friend this guy. I'll friend him 20 times if it, might, if it means I don't have to pay a single cent. Sign me up, brother. <laughs> I love this game. Uh, Alright, yeah, sounds good. I can log on right now and friend you if you want. Without hearing his response. I dart over to my laptop and click on the 
Why, Icon? The loading screen boots up fairly quickly, and in no time I navigate to my friends list and open up the add a new contact prompt. The cursor blinks in the empty vent as I glance back over to him. It's doctor, as in the abbreviation. Underscore, red hat, no underscores. What? Do you want me to type it in? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. My fingers saw on the keyboard, unmoving and not willing to let him touch my laptop. If it was physically possible for my jaw to hit the floor, I'd drop it in an instant. Your red hat? As in Mr. Underscore Red Hat the user? I see thou amazingly able to maintain the boiling rage of lava slurring beneath my veins. Oh Jesus Christ. Shaker Flam, this is not this does not look good for me. Yeah, didn't I say there's an underscore in it? He lets tit off. Ooh, what's happening in this uh multi massive online role playing game? No way. What, do you know me or something? Lorenzo pauses, expressionless to glance over at my screen and search for my username. He repeats the username twice under his breath and then smirts as, as something hit seems to hit him mid-thought. Wait, you're the guy that's always wearing the tacky yellow suit, aren't you? Oh, Jesus. It, Tommy, sit, sit, sit. <laughs> that is so fucking punk. Sit, sit, sit. The one that keeps dying all the time. I feel so utterly horrified at the final reveal that he he is in fact the player that's been terrorizing me in my favorite game. Oh my god. That's too fucking funny. Dying all the time. I die because you stalk me, rob me, terrorize me, and make me lose my influence all over again. Then I have to start from level one. That's why I die all the time. <laughs> I guess you're right then. Classic. You're an asshole. I'm not gonna deny it. <laughs> uh, this is funny. Why are you so mad? It's just trolling, bro. I do that to everyone. Don't be such a sore loser. Sore loser? Oh yeah? Well, you know what I say to that? What? This. I slam the $20 I have on this desk, attend and two flies, close my laptop screen very gently, I pack up my things and start waltzing off, completely and utterly flustered. I'm not adding him as a friend. He can just take my money. <laughs> when I make it out to when I make it out to the hallway, I slow down and try to figure out where the best set set is. My concentration stops when I notice a random guy smiling at me, then looking at me, then looking around cautiously. Hey man, you know Lorenzo or something? What? No, I just met him. Oh, because that's the first time I've heard him have a conversation. Like a full, normal conversation. Was that normal? I guess that's normal. I was like, what? Uh, he's, he's usually really to the point, you feel? Like I said, I just met the guy. Well, don't take it too much to heart. He can be an ass sometimes. Who are we talking to? I'll try. I mumble out before walking away, not really caring if the guy can hear me or not. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten so mad. I'll probably need that 20 bucks or so for something later. Uh, so this is the lab. Uh, coffee? No, this is the lab. This is the computer lab. Or this is school. Um, computer lab. Uh, town. The fountain and the dorms. Let's go to the fountain. I want to feel, feed some pigeons crackers. Maybe I should do that later. Better yet, I should feed those crackers to myself. Uh, let's go back to the dorms. I'm feeling pretty hungry. But I doubt the fridge in our dorm has any food. Then let's go to the fucking bakery. I don't want to run into that guy again. Not right now, at least. Oh my god, which one? Where are we going? Oh, okay, this is the one. All the nice tempting smells walking through the air makes me stop suddenly in the shopping plaza. I could go for some lunch, maybe a coffee or something. 
By the time I get pretty far down the strip, I still can't make up my mind on what to eat, so I decide to get a coffee first. I usually never go out to buy drinks and shots. It's usually an occasional thing, but to be honest, I felt like I need to treat myself to something. A caffeinated beverage would be awesome as a start. Surprisingly, the line isn't very long right now, so I immediately get up to the counter and look at the huge menu. What do they got? I can't read it. I'm fucking blind. Hi, are you ready to order? Um, yeah, I have a... I admit, I have absolutely no idea what I want to order. I haven't taken my eyes off the menu for a moment, but my gaze shifts to the barista when I... Ezra, is that you? Is it Arlene? It's fucking Arlene. Oh no, it's not Arlene. Mira? I order out, but I start to feel like my mind is playing tricks on me. But I feel relieved when I see her put a grin to the best of her abilities. It really is Mira. The one and only in the flesh. How's it been, brother? <gasps> oh yeah, I already fucking knew this. I already, yeah. I, already, I read the description. I already fucking knew who she was. I see you're, fr you're growing your hair out. It looks nice. I gawk and stutter, unsure of what to say. I didn't even recognize her at first, and to be completely honest, her getup is really boyish compared to when I saw her last. It really suits her though. Well, why are you here? Working here? How I got the job is kind of a long story. But did you forget I'm going to St. George High? Oh, well, right. Mira is a junior in high school, and this year she was awarded to she was awarded a scholarship to attend a private school in the city. It's pretty close to my college campus, so it made sense that she might hang around here sometimes. And click. Enough chatter. How about you order something? Sit down. I still have to take my lunch break, so let's talk then. Okay. Well, uh, don't know what to pick. I do. I just I'm just thinking. God, you really don't come here for coffee, do you? She goggles as she presses some keys into the cash register. Pumpkin spice latte. No arguing against it now. I've already ordered it for you. No need to think me. Oh my god. It's so close to getting a pumpkin spice latte. I'm so happy. I love pumpkin spice lattes. That'll be $4.39. Four dollars? Oh my god, what's with the four dollars, Bonnie? That was fucking four dollars in the last game for a fucking milkshake. I'm not fucking paying four dollars for a milkshake. That's insane. Just because I once ate your pumpkin pie for two months straight doesn't mean I'll... She just continues to smile and waits for me to pay up. I sigh and take out my wallet. When it comes to Mira, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Sometimes siblings are odd. When it comes to Mira and I, the only conversations we can have are serious and mature ones. I'm surprised we're still able to talk like this, considering I haven't seen her face to face since last year. We talk on the phone sometimes, briefly, courtesy of Uncle who always has the phone in her hands. There's hardly an age gap between us at all, but sometimes it feels like we're on different planes. I can't say it's a bad thing, because at least we have some sort of relationship. It could be strained. I'm going to drop out. It's my only option. Mira gives me the satisfaction of a pitying look. She's the first person I've told about this, so I guess a little comfort is good. But you've come so far already. What about a part-time job? I did have jobs here on and there on campus, but this past semester has been really hectic. But you're in science, right? Those jobs really make it big, yeah? I'm pretty sure that you could pay it off eventually. I don't really want to live so far away from you and uncle, but especially uncle because, well, the obvious. Someone has to take care of him, and it doesn't have to be you. Mira looks down at the unfinished muffin on her plate. The conversation comes to a brief silence. I want you to go to college, Mira. Get out and go somewhere. Just not here. For some reason, Mira's gaze turns harsh and she scoffs. You mean to go off, get married, and have kids, right? Hey, hey, I didn't jump to that, but anything's possible when you branch off in the world. 
I have to admit that would, that's what was on the back of my mind. Granted, that's what she'd want later on in life, of course. Ah, uh, no, fuck that. Hate to say, it, Ezra, but you're not the only gay one in this family. <gasps> dun dun dun. Well, you're not as gender ambiguous as I am, though. You're gay. And what was this? What was that about being gender ambiguous? Or did she say gender ambitious? Oh my god. Uh, that's going to be the title of my video. Uh, gender ambitious. Uh, don't hold me to that because I'm pretty gonna. I'm really gonna forget it in like five seconds. Uh, this is all completely unexpected. I can't even say I saw this coming. When we were living together, we hardly shared our feelings with each other. And click. Click. Okay. I'm completely stunned and unable to figure out what I want to ask. I want to ask so much. Give me options. Give me options. I want to know what I've missed, but it will take more than a simple answer. There's too much time that I've let slip through the cracks. When did I miss this memo? Mm. Mira simply shreds without giving me a response. Mm. Okay. That's really, I totally to cheer you on, though that took me completely by surprise. I stare at her, eyes furrowed and desperately hoping for some kind of reply. I sigh in defeat. While realizing this conversation is a dead end, I start to wonder. I lean in close, looking around cautiously, then start to whisper. Are you dating someone right now? <laughs> That's... That's not important. Stop derailing this conversation. <laughs> uh, with the obvious reddening in her face, it's to it's so totally obvious something's up in the romance department. I love that they use the, the little asterisk. <laughs> uh, maybe not dating, but it could be a crush. I can't help but think that's really adorable. Unfortunately, I won't be able to pry anything out of her. At least not now. What's there left to talk about? I mean, I really appreciate you listening to my depressing life story up to now, but... Uh, it's for the best, or I made my decision. I mean, they're both kind of similar. I don't really want to drop out, but it might be the best thing. Well, it is your decision. Just make sure it's the one that's right and the one you want. Yeah. And another drink, because I've been recording for like an hour. I think this is my longest episode yet. I think my only longest episode so far are uh, one of the Gone Home episodes and a video from Forget Me Not that I haven't posted yet. Uh, it might be right, but I can say for certain if it's what I want. Sometimes you gotta roll with the hard sets, even if you don't want to. We finish our short lunch before it's time for her break's over. Uh, we stand out face to face, wondering if we should wave goodbye, say goodbye, or hug. We end up we end up slowly moving towards each other for a very weird, awkward hug. A hipster-looking guy in a Pokemon shirt walks in the door at the same time, giving us a strange stare, and we immediately depart from the gesture well see ya yeah see you around I'll come and bother you please don't <laughs> that's cute oh come on don't freeze LBS okay there we go and don't think our conversation about that significant other is over and done with. Oh, Jesus. That's so embarrassing. I don't know what you're talking about. I wonder if that person who works here. Is that why you're acting so suspicious? Please just leave. You're embarrassing me. Fine, fine. If you insist. I wave goodbye as Mira is practically pushing me out of the shop doors. It's really a shock to learn that Mira has been so close this whole time. Perhaps she's planning on going to college, since she's probably saving her money from this part-time job. 
Or maybe she's planning on using the money for uncle. I doubt he would ever accept it though. What's with uncle? I want to know what's wrong with uncle. Either way, it's good she's planning for her future. I admit, I sort of slid through college without any real thought or plan, and I suppose it's obviously backfiring on me. A fucking same. I did the same shit. I had no actual plans. And now I work in retail, and now I'm trying to start a YouTube career. That isn't going so well. At least not right now. It's like, it's still early in the process, but you know. Whatever. Since I'm feeling less hungry and tired, I'm free to do whatever I want for the rest of the day. I want to go feed the pigeons. There's too many people here right now and nobody I know. Uh, back to the dorms. Ah, finally, home sweet dorm. I throw my bag to the ground and flop around on my bed. Once I feel comfortable, I pull out my laptop and start surfing on it. I'm listening to some music in my earphones when I don't realize that Jonia has entered the room. Hey yo, Ezra. Huh? Oh, hey, Jenya. My eyes shift around uncomfortably at the sight of Jenya and high spirits. It's so strange. He wasn't in such a great state not too long ago. Uh, so what about yesterday? Hmm? Yesterday? Oh, sorry about yesterday, bro. It's still hitting me pretty hard. I'll pull through, though. I can't help but not be so sure on the honesty in that statement. I feel like he's just saying it to make everything feel normal, but I wish him good luck regardless. Um, I want to go to the fountain. Night breeze over here is calming and nice. Yay, I'm at the fountain. Oh, yes, hurry up and fucking catch up with me. It's showing like the layouts now. Aww. I want to go to a fountain. I wish I had a fountain. There's a lot of people gathered in the gardens today, though. So I take a twist around the hedges and can soon hear the chatter fade out. I'm having a grand old time, enjoying solitude and all, when I accidentally step on something hard and jump. Eek! A let off squeak that comes out strangely, thinking I've stepped on a snake or something, but come to realize it was someone's foot. Oops, oh man, I'm sorry. No, you didn't put too much pressure on it. Aw. Wait, Ezra, is that you? I love his alien shirt. That's, that's cute. Uh, yeah. We're both pretty surprised to see each other, and for this hour of the day, that for that matter. As I attempt to take a better look at my surroundings, I notice that Dion's sitting on a rock and zipping up a large leather bag. But it doesn't look like a briefcase or anything. It looks a little like a sports bag, but classier. What are you doing all the way over here? Just taking a walk, what about you? Nothing really important. He just simply said, he just, he says, just simply smiles. Well, that's pretty vague. V vague. Vague. Um smile back. I have absolutely no idea what to say so I just stare at him and grin. It's over the fact that my grin looks seriously weird. No, oh, it's adorable. He freezes up and suddenly looks very defensive. I don't know why, why, what, I don't know what you're getting all smiley about, dude. Unless you saw something. Huh? As if he was analyzing my face or something, he soon, seen, he soon seems to relax. Was he testing me? Never mind. Well, anyway, I should hit the showers. Catch you later. Yeah. What the hell just happened? It's finally time to turn into the night. Tiny <laughs> it's finally time to turn in, and I feel completely exhausted. I switch out my alarm clock and hope it will be enough to wake me in the morning. A 
Okay, that's just uh, audio. Okay. Z Three days later. Oh, Jesus. Where the fuck did I put that Pendleton coat? Oh, Jesus. Is this is he still going on about the fucking coat? Before I'm able to even comprehend it, I've just jolted awake and have started peeking under my bed. When I groggily mumble, where did he go? I stop myself and sit still on the cold floor. It must have been a dream. Yes, just a dream. A dream where I was searching all over my house for that damn coat. <laughs> it really sucks. It's a really nice coat, you know. Pathetic chain retailers like Urban Outfitters sometimes try to sell those style try to sell those styles, but it won't ever compare to my coat. It had genuine wool lining. It was tacky, not trending, and that's what made it special. It's funny how much I'm longing for it now. When I was 13, I dreaded wearing that thing. I only wanted to wear black hoodies, Converse, and skinny jeans. Fucking insane, but I, I, I'm fat. My legs are fat, so I, I don't even like wearing regular jeans. I don't like wearing pants. Pants suck. Unless they're, cat, unless they're like really nice dress pants. Other than that, I don't really give a shit. I cringe at the thought of my sorry it's used for side paint. I used to cut them myself. Oh, Jesus Christ. I never cut my hair myself. I don't think I did. With the razor, I shiver at the memory of that. Oh, my God. Uh, Bonnie, if you're watching this, please do a uh, fucking young Ezra. <laughs> uh, when I'm done reminiscing, I decide it's time to get up from the floor and do something. Actually do something. Time flies pretty fast. I wake up feeling pretty good for once. And early too. I have classes in the afternoon, so right now I have a little free time. Uh, let's go check out, uh... I could go to the library and browse, actually read something leisurely for once. However, there's a sinking feeling in my chest reminding me that my busy schedule is the reason why I don't have a job. And the reason I don't have a job is the reason why I'm swimming in Shit's Creek right now. The truth is, it's possible. It's probably impossible to hold de to hold a job. Um, it's not as entirely impossible as I make it out to me. I just kind of like being able to get at least seven hours of sleep and eat somewhat normally. Not to mention, ooh, excuse me, not to mention being able to function. I guess I can't blame myself for wanting that, but for the time being, lolly ga no lollygagging around the campus if I can help it. So where am I going to go? Mm. Mm. The more I stare at my laptop, the more I'm tempted to play some games. Eventually I give in and play a couple of rounds of Hoi. After a good half an hour, after a good half hour, I decide it's time to put the game to a close. There's no use sitting around all day. I better go and get some fresh air while I can. Uh, let's go back to the fountain. I make my way through the fountain pathway and focus my gaze on the newly blooming flowers. The whole area surrounding the fountain is pretty much a garden, and it works magic on the stress nerves of college students. And God knows how stressed we all are. Instead of stopping to smell the roses, a lot of people come here to hang out and talk. Out of all the places, I don't know why, because it's fucking nice. However, there's a few people here today, but I guess it isn't so bad. I walk around a few times, looking at all the different flowers, admiring the decor that always remains unchanged. But then I stop once I see someone out of the corner of my eye. Someone is walking down the pathway, about to cross me. About to cross behind me, but we both stop in our place. Is it Dion? No. It's Arlene. Okay. <laughs> She's carrying a small bag and a huge sketchbook in one hand. She stares at me for a brief moment, maybe looking just as scared as I am to see her, but a weak smile manages its form on her lips. Hey there, Ezra. Oh, Arlene. I turn her completely around to face her, but regret doing it since it requires me to have a whole conversation with her. Then again, it wasn't like I was doing anything important with the hydrangeas. 
I try to sift through any kind of topic I can bring up, but I shoot them all down. I can't say what's new, or how's a single life, or even, hey, why did you break up with Junia? Was it because of the thing I said a while ago? What did you say, Ezra? I really want to know. Plus, I can tell she's struggling a lot with trying to say something that isn't related to a recent breakup with someone who will remain nameless. You must think I'm the incarnation of the devil now, huh? I let the word sink in for a good moment before realizing she did in fact say, I'm devil. <laughs> it's really hard to do that considering how soft her laugh lines were when she said it. What? Me? No, not at all. I stutter out and it's still hinting with confusion. As she holds her sketchbook close to her chest and continues. You might not think it, but you're always so sweet. Uh-huh. I could beg to differ. <laughs> He's definitely not happy about the whole thing, is he? What did you think, Arlene? It's a goddamn breakup. Of course the guy could not be happy. When I don't respond, she just huffs with a little exasperation, but still managing to seem sweet and not as frustrated as she really is. Sorry, it was a stupid question. Arlene shifts her gaze elsewhere, possibly on the blooming flowers or an imaginary memory of her it's floating around. Does she regret it? And if so, is it because of what I said? For a brief moment, it's my turn to start seeing figments that aren't real. It's contagious. But don't worry about it. We'll smooth things out. I don't want to give him the wrong idea. I can only stare at her wide-eyed, but she gives me a wide smile. She slaps me on my shoulder before walking away and waits from behind. See you around, cousin. Oh, shit. I did not see that one coming. Yeah, see ya. Now that chair brings me back. Oh, okay, okay. Arlene and I aren't related, of course, but back on the res, everyone calls each other cousin. Okay, okay, that's a little bit better. That makes me feel a little bit better. College has been scary. It's been a mess, a wreck, an anxiety mess and wreck, and a completely different universe compared to our home. To be able to have some people be... To have people... To be able to have people there who know where you're from and you know who you are. I'm not sure if I can consider it good, but it sure is hell comforting. I look back to the path that Arlene has long disappeared from. I miss those days when she was my friend, but I suppose I can only blame myself for simply stopping to consider her as one. Ah, uh, it's daytime. Shall we go to class? My class for today is human biology, which I'm surprised to note that I've arrived pretty early. A lot of students are chatting and waiting around for the pressure to return. Right where my seat usually is, there's a huge group that's ta talking obnoxiously amongst themselves, so I, did, so I decide it's best to pick a seat somewhere else. I make my way to the front of the room where there's usually a bunch of empty seats in one corner. As I approach, mo uh, as I approach much closely, I notice a familiar figure with an open laptop. When I get close enough to see his features, well, the back of his, the f back of his features at least, I can tell it's Dion. Now that I formerly met Dion, I feel like I notice him around a lot more often. Who knew he was in this class all along? I'm about to say a greeting when I'm distracted by what's being shown on the screen. <gasps> Is it gay porn? He's watching something. <gasps> it's gay porn! But it's not a movie or YouTube. It's a cartoon. It's anime. And one that I recognize right off the bat. Um, Danganronpa. Free. Whoa, dude. Is that TurboTech? Wow. I don't fucking know. It. I don't think. I don't think that's real. That can't be real. Jesus fucking. Dion chokes, on, <laughs> chokes out with an extremely petrified expression. I must have really scared him because he practically falls out of his chair in the process. He's able to quickly calm himself as soon as he notices me. Oh, sorry, Ezra. Don't sneak up on me like that. <laughs> sorry, just couldn't help myself. I was going to say hi, but then I saw you watching the Zenith of Magnificence. Magnificence? Magnificence. 
Magnificent. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Magnificence. I take it you're a fan. Hell yeah. Dude, I used to pry my eyes open at night just to watch it. Same. Oh, Dion is so cute. They're all cute. I love them all. I pulled my chair closer to him to get a better view of the screen. And to this, Dion tilts the laptop at an angle to help. Is this the episode when the Gear of Valkyrie wing dispatches from the mainframe and accidentally releases a nuclear warhead on the Colossus Regiment uh, 11 Colony? 11 or G? G Colony. The Disillusioned Mainframe Mark? Yes, bro. Do you want it? You want the other side of my headphones? Oh, jeez. Seriously, right on. <laughs> oh my god. 10 out of 10. That is uh, on par with what I can draw, honestly. <laughs> uh, with goofy smiles uh, illuminated on our faces, we watch a couple minutes of the episode. We're so caught up in the episode that we don't notice the professor has already gone up to the podium, readying himself for the lecture. He gives us, he gives us an odd stare and we immediately take the headphones out and straighten back up. It's not like he's going to stop us. Oh my god, I've bit my tongue. Oh fuck, that hurt. I hope I'm not beating. That actually hurt. I bit the side of it like really hard. It's not like he's going to stop us or anything, but it feels a little embarrassing to realize how much we were nerding out in public. Dion minimizes the window and starts preparing a document for note taking. I prefer the more traditional method, a pen and college ruled paper, so I get right on whipping my notebook out. As the professor starts his usual greeting, I glance back to Dion and our gazes meet. We shoot each other really wide grins. How bad was the damage, Admiral Creighton? Dion manages to slip out in a really hushed mumble. I try so hard not to laugh really, really hard. <laughs> I have to be extremely monotone for the for this voice impression. They're all dead, Lieutenant. But as I reach the end, I can't contain my laughter any further. We both chuckle as quietly as we can without attempting to look like we're taking notes. I can't stop thinking about that iconic scene of the anime. The English TV station dub is filled to the brim with hilariously bad acting. And yet it's the most amazing thing ever. Dion and I have definitely bonded in that unexpected moment. It's pretty awesome. Uh, where to go? Go to back to bed, in the fountain. Uh, let's go back to the fountain. The fountain summons me to it again as usual. I'm sorry for sending you there. I just really like going there. There's something just so calming about being here at night. However, I realize I'm not alone in the area where I begin to hear a, clou a cloud, a crowd of people. I watch a group of four kids sitting on the cement, cards displayed in front of them. They're playing Yu-Gi-Oh and arguing about the rules. Yep, exactly the same reason why I stopped playing that when I was 14. My mood is spoiled, so I decide to walk somewhere else. Uh... Let's go over here. The building feels so empty at night. The lights are still on though, and I can still hear voices in some distant parts of the room. I'm waiting for OP. I'm waiting for it to catch up. Oh, come on, click, you fucker. Ah. This paper. This paper. Ah. This paper is due in two hours. It actually sounds pretty creepy. <laughs> I like how he's just standing there listening. Yeah, but I think I'm going to leave. Okay, let's just go back to bed. Well, back to the dorm, I guess. I conveniently maneuver myself around some drunk or tired students, possibly both, doing some sort of odd line dance in the halls. I keep myself pretty much up against the wall, trying not to make any contact, but my plant unfortunately fails. One guy, with a tie wrapped around his head, waves up nauseously at me to come in and dance. Sure, this all seems friendly enough, but it's all a trap. 
This line dance will go on forever with no way out. So I keep my line up. So I keep my line of sight ahead while he continuously waves. Hey, Ezra. I raise an eyebrow and smile my face. Oh God, they've evolved. Now they've somehow learned my name, and that's they're all going to start chanting it like a drunken demonic summoning to make me bend to the power of the line dance. Oh, sorry, baby. Ezra, it's me. <laughs> I gasp when I realize that Junior is one of the dancers who's calling me over. Oh, he's that's so cute with that on that fucking crab and the glowing necklaces and everything. I started well, completely frozen in place, mesmerized by his glow stick necklaces, and especially the ridiculous crab thing on his head. His smile falters for a second, then he smirts in realization. Oh, this is so cute. I love the art. It's really cute. Crazy hat, right? Yeah, it's definitely crazy. I let him up and down, then lean in for a brief moment to sniff the air around him. Strange, I don't smell any alcohol. He notices this and laughs. Oh, come on, OBS. I believe in you. I believe you can do it. Oh my god, please catch up. It's not catching up. Oh, please. Okay, there we go. Oh, come on, dude. I haven't been drinking. I just kind of got caught up on this. I got, I just, uh, I just kind of got caught up in this all of a sudden. It's actually been pretty fun. This, the drunken line dance. That guy over there has a portable stuffed tiger stereo, Junya. A stuffed tiger. Actually, I think my sister has a stuffed bear that uh, doubles as a stereo inside of it. Maybe. I think it's a bear. I don't remember. Ah, uh, come on. Tigers are adorable. Don't knock it till you try it. Want to come in for the next round? No. I think I'll pass. Junya begins to corner me farther and further down the hall with a goofy smile on his face. What's wrong? Don't like having fun, Mr. McGruppy Pants? Yes, actually. I don't like having fun. I hate having fun. Just one round. Come on, one round. Suddenly, I hear everyone chime in, shouting my name over and over again. The guy with the tiger stereo starts turning up the volume up to accommodate the fun. Though it isn't that loud. Damn it. Woo, that's a spirit. I have no choice but to remain a dancing slave for the rest of the day. When Junia and I return to the dorms, I refuse to talk to him. I turn up a late night episode of Simply Minge and pretend to be way too invested in a recipe about tofu Greek salad. That sounds awful. Well, folks, it's the end of the demo. The game is still a work in progress, so hopefully the full release will be available around the end of this year. You can always check out my progress on Twitter or the Rosewater Games blog. Thanks for playing! Uh, story and art by Bonnie, backgrounds, morg file, personal files, and Sims 3 dorm placeholder. I wanted to finish reading! Okay, so that has been Sage Rush. That was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, it definitely engaged, engaged my attention a lot more. Uh, not to say that Forget Me Not didn't. Uh, I'm still playing that and I know there's a lot more going on in there. Uh, but this was really good. This has been, this, it kind of lets improved upon Forget Me Not. Uh, Sagebrush is entirely on its own and it's so fucking beautiful. I look forward to playing the full release. It looks really awesome. Um... Uh, but yeah, thank you, Bonnie, for uh, being so amazing at creating these uh, visual novels. They're so fucking good. I'm enjoying them, and I'm going to fucking uh, tweet at you if something bad happens, because I'm already going to tweet at you for something happening, and forget me not. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, until then, I will see you all in the next video. Uh, so be safe, have fun, and enjoy yourself. Bye.